Hey students, welcome to the notes on isotopes and isotope notation. Let's get started. Pull out your science notebook. Here's the essential question. How does the average mass on the periodic table relate to isotopes? Before we get into that, I want to do a little bit of a review. We need to remember about the subatomic particles in an atom and how to use the periodic table to determine the average amount of each of them. So here's a question. I recommend you pause the video and try to figure it out yourself. All right, I hope you took an opportunity to pause this video, but let's go ahead and go through the answer just to make sure we know. The periodic table has some important information. This number here at the top is called the atomic number, and it lets us know the number of protons in a, of an atom. And that's always true for the element. That can't change. Nitrogen always has seven protons. Now, down here at the bottom, this is known as the atomic mass. So actually, it's an average atomic mass, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But remember, the mass of an atom is represented by the number of protons and neutrons. And so to find the average nitrogen, we're just going to round this to 14. So how many protons does this element have? Well, it has seven, and we get that from the atomic number. What about neutrons? Well, this is where we can use the mass. Remember, the mass here, if we round it to 14, means that there's 14 protons and neutrons. So if we subtract the number of protons, that leaves us seven neutrons. And so we just take the atomic mass and minus the protons, and we can figure out the number of neutrons. How about electrons? Well, the periodic table does not tell us anything about the number of electrons, but we do know something about this nitrogen. It says here that it is neutral. We do know that electrons are negatively charged and protons are like their opposites. They're positively charged. Therefore, in order for this atom to be neutral, there has to be the same amount of protons and electrons. Now, that's not always true but it is in this case because this atom is neutral. There are some nitrogens that do have a charge, but this one doesn't. So the number of electrons for now is equal to the number of protons if the element is neutral. All right, I wanna talk a little bit more about average atomic mass. Remember the number, the mass on the periodic table is an average mass. That's why it's listed as a decimal. Now what's it an average of? It's an average of all of nitrogens or whatever that element's isotopes are. So what are isotopes? Isotopes are two or more forms of the same element with the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. And therefore they have different masses. So take a look here. I have three examples of an element. Now all of these are, all, all of, these are the same element. This one is nitrogen 14. This one is nitrogen 15 in the middle. And the one on the right is nitrogen 16. Now we'll talk about what those numbers 14, 15, and 16 mean in a moment, but I first wanna talk about their abundance. Notice I gave you some percentages down there. What this percentage means is how often we predict that we see it in the universe. Nitrogen 14, this isotope of nitrogen, is 99.63% abundant. We see a lot of nitrogen 14 in the universe. Nitrogen 15, not so much. We only see about 0.36% of nitrogen 15. It does exist, just not a lot. Nitrogen 16, we see very little of nitrogen 16. Again, it does exist, but just not so much. So going back to our definition, these are three forms of the same element. Now, what's true if they're all the same element? They all have the same number of protons. Nitrogen, as we saw in the previous slide, has seven protons, and that never changes. That's what makes these all nitrogen. What does change about them is their neutrons. The neutrons in the middle can change. So here, nitrogen 14 has seven protons and seven neutrons. Hey, seven plus seven is 14. So this number right here just represents the mass of that isotope. Seven protons and eight neutrons represent nitrogen 15, or the mass of this isotope. And seven protons and nine neutrons represent nitrogen 16, or the mass of this nitrogen. So those are three isotopes of nitrogen, same element, just different numbers of neutrons and therefore different masses. The number of electrons are the same for all of these. We're assuming that these elements are neutral, which they are. But one thing we might want to note is the stability. Nitrogen 14 and nitrogen 15 are stable. 
Nitrogen-16 is not stable. The nucleus doesn't tend to want to stay together. This might tell us a little bit more about why we see more nitrogen-14s and nitrogen-15s, and we don't see very much nitrogen-16. So again, going back to the average atomic mass on the periodic table, if we look at this number here, what we're seeing is an average. And what it's saying is this. Nitrogen's average atomic mass is 14.01. That's because we see a lot more nitrogen 14s. Those nitrogen 14s with 99.63% abundance affect our average a lot more than nitrogen 15 or nitrogen 16 do. Those still affect the average, just not so much. That's why the average is around 14, but it's still 14.01. All right, I want to talk lastly about isotope notation. Typically, we need to differentiate between the different isotopes, and so we usually use some type of symbols to do so. Now, you're going to see here nitrogen-14 as a symbol that looks like this. This is a little bit different than what we see on the periodic table. Remember, this shows us the atomic number and the average atomic mass. Here, this is a very specific nitrogen with a very specific mass. And so this is the isotope mass. We put in the upper left-hand corner of the symbol of nitrogen. Now, sometimes in textbooks or written out, you might also see a number down here below that. That's just the atomic number. And in all honesty, it's completely optional. You don't need to write that number there. I don't like to write that number there because it's redundant. We know it's nitrogen and only nitrogen gets seven protons. It's the only atom with the atomic number of seven. So what would nitrogen 15 look like? Well, we would just put a 15 in the upper left-hand corner. Again, that represents the mass of this particular isotope of nitrogen. And finally, nitrogen 16 would look like that. So let's finish off with a practice. Again, try to pause the video and see if you can determine the answer to this question. What is the name and isotope notation for a bromine isotope with 47 neutrons? Try to pause the video now. If you need some help, unpause the video and I'll give you a hint. All right, are you ready for that hint? Here is one hint. This is bromine on the periodic table. And there's some information that we need here. But remember, this bromine on the periodic table is the average bromine, not the isotope. So we'll need some information from it, but we don't need all the information from it. All right, did you figure out the answer? Let's see if I can help you here. So talking about this bromine on the periodic table, we're gonna need some information. But one piece of information we don't need is the mass. This is an average mass. We're not talking about the average bromine. We're talking about a very specific isotope of bromine. So we can't rely on the mass here. We gotta kind of figure it out ourselves. So what do we know about this bromine? Well, we do know that this is the symbol for bromine and we need that to write the isotope notation. So that's one very important piece of information we pull from the periodic table. What else do we need? We need the number of protons. We know that bromine has 35 protons, so we're going to write 35p down here. Now, this isotope specifically has 47 neutrons. Both the protons and the neutrons make the mass of this particular isotope of bromine. So if we add those together, we get 82. Notice again that this 82 does not match up with the average mass. This is not the average bromine. This is our mass of the bromine isotope that we're talking about. So we're going to write that in the upper left-hand corner, which gives us our answer. This is the isotope notation for bromine 82. Now, in a textbook, you might also see it written like this. This is how we would write the name of the isotope, bromine-82, 82 being the mass, just like the isotope notation shows us the mass in the upper left-hand corner. That's the end of the notes. Take some time right now and review and highlight key terms. Ponder and ask questions, but don't forget to seek answers to those questions and summarize that essential question. Good luck.